Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be about clinic and how that works in a genetic counseling program. So the clinical rotations are something that is a pillar in every genetic counseling program. As far as I'm aware, it's pretty critical because that is what you will eventually be doing as a genetic counselor. And so coursework is one of the main three pillars, I would say. Then you have clinical rotations, which this video will discuss further. And then you have, to some extent, a thesis or a research project. So different programs call it different things, but those are overall the main three categories that you'll be working on in genetic counseling programs. And so clinic is something I feel like we can talk about now that I've had my first semester and I can, I can reflect on that a little bit more accurately. So clinic is seeing patients in the hospital or in your healthcare setting to learn how that works as a genetic counselor. So this will start off usually with observational clinic where you're just going with a genetic counselor and you're watching what they do, maybe taking some notes and just observing how that session goes so that eventually you'll be able to apply that yourself uh, when you are further into the program and you are on your own. One misconception that I had beginning the program is that clinic was built into our schedule. Uh, I'm not sure how that would have worked in hindsight, but I thought clinic would be, you know, you have take embryology and intro to genetic counseling and, you know, whatever other classes. And then one of them is like clinic, a block of time. That's not how it works, at least in our program. In our program, clinic is assigned to you by individual genetic counselors. So in our program, we do five week rotations. So a semester is about 15 or 16 weeks. So that works out that you have three different rotation blocks in each semester. And so you will be assigned one genetic counselor as your supervisor for that some, for that block of five weeks. You have to, on your own accord, work out a schedule with that supervisor based on when they see patients. So this is just their job to see patients as a genetic counselor. And so they might see patients only on Mondays and Tuesdays or just on Thursdays or Wednesdays and Mondays and Fridays or whatever. So you have to fit that around the other classes that you're taking um, just by discussing the availability of the genetic counselor. So that's one thing I didn't know coming into genetic counseling program is that you are basically figuring out your clinic schedule on your own with that supervising genetic counselor. Then after the five weeks, that's gonna change because the next genetic counselor that you're with will be in a different specialty most likely, and they will probably have a different schedule as to when they see patients. So you have to, once again, rework your schedule for clinic, but notably your class schedule is not really changing. So your schedule will kind of change every five weeks depending on when you're seeing patients in clinic, though your classes will be the same for the whole 15 week semester. Again, that's just how our program works. I'm assuming a lot of these things would be the same across uh, programs though. Another thing about clinic, our program at Cincinnati starts clinic pretty early. So I know a lot of programs, they won't start until the second semester of the first year or the summer after the first year when almost every program does a summer clinical rotation for about seven or eight weeks. And so we do have that, but we started clinic after five weeks into the first semester. So that's pretty rare and that's pretty early in the grand scheme of things as far as I understand. However, I think that's a really good advantage that our program has, and it's made it really easy to feel comfortable in clinic uh, by starting out just observing and then gradually taking on responsibilities so that by the time the summer does come around and the second year does come around, we've had a ton of experience seeing patients already. Those are some kind of misconceptions or confusions I had before coming to the program that I now understand a lot better. Uh, so I wanted to share that, but in terms of the actual way that the clinic will go. I want to explain that in a little bit more depth right now. So before anything else, before a clinic block of five weeks begins, you already know your supervisors. We actually have our supervisors for the whole year already laid out. And so about a week before a clinic block will begin, you're supposed to reach out to that supervisor uh, and see what their schedule is like in terms of setting up a weekly meeting with them. Uh, for during your block and also figuring out what days during the week and what times will work for your weekly clinic visits to see patients. In addition to meeting with them about the times that you will go to their clinic for the five weeks, you also will send them three goals that you have for the rotation. So things you want to improve on with tangible skills like taking a family history or, you know, talking about a certain subject, you know, any, any kind of goal you have about 
your genetic counseling experience over the next five weeks and how you want to perform in clinic and things you might want to improve on or work on specifically. So you send those goals to your supervisor at the beginning of the rotation so that by the end, you'll be able to meet again and see how you performed on those goals. So that's something you do a week or two before the, the clinic block starts. Um, and then once that's established, eventually the time for the clinic block to start will come around and then you will start going to that clinic. So when you go to the clinic, your supervisor will usually tell you with some advance notice of the patients you will see in the clinic before that clinic day approaches. So a couple days before the clinic, my supervisor would send me information about the patients that I'm going to see that are scheduled for that clinic where I will be attending. And that will allow me to do what's called a case prep. And so case prepping is overall just finding out information about the patient in terms of their medical history, uh, specifically with genetics, but also all encompassing so that I know what to expect when we go into the clinic. Uh, you need to know why you're going to be seeing them, what their diagnosis is or what the suspected diagnosis is based on their symptoms, if they've had any genetic testing, what their genetic testing results were, that sort of thing. And so that really depends on the clinic you're seeing because that information will vary. Some people are a new patient to genetics, so they don't have any genetic testing records that you are disclosing or have as a resource because maybe you'll be ordering genetic testing for them. Some people might have genetic testing available in their electronic medical records because that's what you're disclosing in this appointment and they haven't seen that information yet. Other times they have records from a while ago in terms of genetic testing and then that's just something you have to know for context of the situation that, oh, this patient has a variant in the DMD gene and that's why they have muscular dystrophy or something like that. So overall, a case prep is to allow you to do some research on the specific patients you're going to see. That way you know what you're going to expect in the clinic and why the patient is there, what you need to expect in the clinic and what you will be talking about based on the results and what the next steps would be uh, for that patient. So that's a case prep. Uh, that's the thing you would do before the clinic. Then you're going to go to the clinic uh, depending on the status of your rotation, whether it's just an observational rotation, uh, in that case, you would just be observing the genetic counselor and pretty much doing nothing other than just watching the session, maybe taking notes or just uh, trying to get a good understanding of how that session is going. But if it's a participatory session, then you will have discussed with your counselor beforehand that, okay, I will take a family history or I will explain what a whole exome sequencing is when we get them to consent for that test or something like that. So you will have your responsibilities outlined ahead of time. They won't just throw that on you, but a lot of times that would look like just taking a family history or having some sort of explanation of maybe an inheritance pattern or a test or otherwise. So you will have already outlined your responsibilities beforehand. It's not kind of an impromptu thing. Um, and that's basically all that you're doing in the, the during a session. Now, after the session, there's a couple things you have to do. And I'm sure it varies by the program, but we have a certain software that we have to upload a case evaluation onto. So after we have a session, we will go in and it's just called a case summary. And so there's a couple things basically explaining what the case was, like the patient you were seeing, their condition or their diagnosis, what kind of genetic testing they had, how the session went. That's just a brief summary of how the session went. Certain psychosocial and genetic counseling skills that you observed from the counselor or that you participated in as the student. And then overall, just what you gained from this experience, like what the value was in that session. And so that's something that you then have a record of all the sessions you've ever seen or participated in. And that's just a way to document all the work you've been doing. And then um, that will come into play for your graduation requirements and just having all of that on a record for the entirety of your graduate experience. But in addition to that, um, you do that for every case, but if you just observed, then that would be the end of your responsibilities for that case. However, if you participated in the case, then you would fill out a case evaluation form, which basically you would be checking off the different roles and responsibilities of the session in which you participated. You would also have your genetic counseling supervisor then verify that information and give you an evaluation on how you did with those skills or activities of the session. And then that's something that you upload as a, a document, which you would li link to the case summary that you just completed for that case. So that way you have everything documented. You will be able to see for this case, you know, the roles you took on, what the patient's age was and what their diagnosis was or their symptoms, what testing you were gonna order, how the session went. All those different things are just outlined uh, in your records that way. So that is what you do after the session. Um, in terms of a clinic block wrapping up, 
There are only five weeks, so they do go very quickly. At the end of the five weeks, you'll have a short meeting with your supervisor to just see how things went, follow up on the goals that you outlined from the beginning and see if you met them or what you still have to work on and how you feel going into the next rotation. You would have already reached out to your next supervisor with another set of goals and another you know, establishment of a schedule to meet with them and to go to their clinic. And so then, you know, once that five weeks is over, you would just be jumping right into the next one. So overall, that is the structure of clinic in a more detailed sense. You know, applying to programs and going through that whole process last year, the only thing I really knew about clinic is that you did go to clinic and that's where you were seeing patients and working with patients, participating. I didn't know that really the time frame or the detailed procedures that go along with the clinic rotation. And so hopefully this is a little bit more information that will help you out as you're preparing for a genetic counseling program. So again, I don't know if that applies specifically to every program, but I'm sure it's, it's largely similar and that's how it works at Cincinnati. So I hope you got something out of that video and I'll be making some more in the near future because applications are pretty much wrapped up and interviews will be starting soon. So good luck with your process and I will see you in the next one.